Welcome, welcome back. I wanted to begin our session today a little bit differently. This is not original. I have this from a teacher of mine. Let me share it with you. We are living in isolation. We are worrying about contamination. We're experiencing deterioration. Is the solution meditation? My teacher, Sheila Peltz Weinberg, made that up. I give her all credit. But in fact, it is a wonderful way of indicating how important this skill has become. I am finding that with, with every day that passes, I am more and more convinced that a mindful, loving, compassionate awareness of our circumstances and of our reactions is one of the most powerful tools we have during this crisis when we feel very helpless and in fact out of control. I also continue to be inspired by the themes and the calendar of our tradition. Today is the 18th day of the counting of the Omer. The counting of the Omer is a practice we discussed briefly the last time we were together. It's very ancient. It was a way of bringing offerings to the temple during the seven weeks between the second day of Pesach and the festival of Shavuot. It was offerings from the early spring harvest of barley on the way to the significant, the more significant and more important harvest of wheat at the beginning of the summer. It also was a way of marking the seven weeks to take us from Passover, from the Exodus from Egypt to Mount Sinai and the giving of the Torah. The number 18 is symbolic in itself. But as we share this time together, we are about to begin the 19th day of the counting of the Omer in the age of COVID-19. An ancient and seemingly anachronistic practice is having new meaning at this time. As old as it is, I find that this entire time is primitive in the way in which, in the tools that we have, in the way in which we are dealing with it. We don't have many tools to deal with the virus itself. We have lots of 21st century tools to help us navigate this time technologically, etc. But it offers us, the counting of the omen, offers us a way of waiting, of not just marking time, but of living this time with the possibility of increase of anticipation, even of growth. I am. Um, would also point out, unusually, this is a time of counting up. This is the 18th day of the Omer. Tomorrow will be the 19th. Wednesday will be the 20th. Normally, when we are looking forward to something, we count down, as in, there are 10 days till my birthday. There, we count down to uh, uh, Times Square of New Year's, of the secular New Year's Eve. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. The same goes for liftoff of a rocket ship. But here, we're counting up. And it's, which, which makes for the possibility of increase, of growth that might happen in any number of ways as we hope to increase our awareness, our understanding our tolerance, our patience. We are, after all, in the Jewish calendar, moving towards 
what is arguably the most important moment in our tradition, and that is the giving of the ticket. At this moment, the image might serve to inspire us with the knowledge that the greatest gifts sometimes emerge from the most unexpected places. They can emerge even in the wilderness, a wilderness of fear, anxiety, confusion, and loss. They can emerge to open a way, to give us hope, to uplift and inspire us, to be a gift of blessing. So let us sit, let us sit comfortably. If we want to sit a little bit more at attention, we can do that also. But let us sit with a certain sense of posture, of presence, of being here right now at this moment. And let us breathe oh, that full, deep, releasing, healing breath. On this 18th day of the counting of the Omer, this 18th day of waiting and of counting up, let us inhale the breath of life, of anticipation, of expansiveness, and breathe out the narrowness of our current experience. Let us breathe in the strength, vigor, and hope of each renewing breath, and exhale the frustrations, the irritations, the annoyances of this time. Let us ascend, ascend with every restorative breath, if not to Mount Sinai, to a higher perspective, a broader vision, a greater landscape. If only for these next few moments, our concentration, our mindfulness with each breath, allows us to release, to be unconstrained in our being, to be fully, freely, vitally here. Today is the 18th day of the counting of the Omer. We join with our ancestors in waiting for and anticipating a better, safer, more comfortable time. Let us breathe in that comfort that uplift, that vision, so that right now, right here, we can breathe out anything that might trouble us, anything that gives us pause, anything that clouds our minds. Let us breathe it out. Let us let it go. Let us release. And breathe in renewal. A restorative breath. a restorative attitude of expansiveness and spaciousness within our hearts, within our minds, within our souls.
Let us stay with that breath as it brings in possibility and let's go. of current limitations. The Omer was a measure. We don't know exactly how much, but a measure of barley, a sheep, what we might call a few pounds today. So the bringing of the Omer to the temple in Jerusalem each day for 49 days was a gathering in and a giving out. A gathering in of product, produce, of productivity, and a giving out so that we might continue to know the blessing of a fertile ground, of rain in their seasons. Let us gather in and let us give out the best of who we are, of what we are. Let us imagine at least that we can gather into ourselves an increase of patience, of thoughtfulness, of kindness, of generosity, and that we can send it out again. as blessings, gifts to help, to heal, to uplift, to restore. We gather in, we offer out. We gather in with each breath. We offer out. It may not last. It doesn't have to. But for these few minutes, this oasis of time just for us. We breathe in, we gather in. And we breathe out again.
you breathe in that spaciousness and expansiveness of spirit so that we might breathe out our gifts in the world. I am aware that this week, tomorrow night, in fact, brings with it another Jewish observance, Yom Ha'atzma'ut, Israel's Independence Day. It is as if this story, this human story of challenge and rising above keeps repeating over and over again. Israel literally emerged from the ashes of destruction. And what a miraculous emergence that has been. Even at this time, Israel leads us in many ways in its treatment of this pandemic. Just a couple of examples from the state of Israel during this time. Despite the difficulties, most Israelis gave up the family Passover Seder and did it alone because they are responsible citizens and wanted to be safe. The four questions could be heard on balconies around the country. The Israel Defense Forces sent soldiers to bring food to the elderly and the Jerusalem municipality calls the elderly to ask how they are doing during this time. When infected parents couldn't attend their newborn's circumcision, breach, Bris, Bris, Brit Mila, the two Hadassah midwives who delivered him went instead. And we know that a great deal of research is being done there, looking for a vaccine as well. Let me leave you today with the thought that the national anthem of the State of Israel is entitled Hatikva the hope. And among its verses, Odlo Avda Tikvatinu, we have not lost our hope, the hope of 2,000 years to be restored in the land of Israel, but for all of us in a world restored the health, the strength, the vigor, and once again, to productivity and positive endeavor. May God bless you this week with tikva, with hope. And let us continue to breathe fully deeply in this very moment of our lives that we can fill with a mindful intention and with a loving spirit. God bless you. Please stay healthy.
stay safe. And we'll be together again next time. Bye-bye.